it's it's like building blocks of experiences. You go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. I would not have you ignorant. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 1. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto those unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. In other words, different expressions of that gift, different ways that gift is carried out, different styles, but the same Lord. Verse 6. And there are diversities or variety of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the Spirit of the word of wisdom. To another, the Spirit, excuse me, to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit remember we talked about it the other day the reason it says gifts of healing i know one of my gifts is inner healing i know another gift is healing of limbs past that it's a hit and miss but there are people who have anointings for eyes Praying for eyes and people receive their eyesight. Praying for organs and people get new organs or get healed, whatever. There are people who have working of miracles, but let's go on. Um, I don't want to digress. Uh, anyway, to another faith by the Spirit. To another the gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work is that, that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man, that means giving, distributing to every man severally as he, as God wills, as he will. For as the body is one, and have many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ, right? For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. The body is not one member, but many members. And then there's another scripture further on that says, does everyone speak in tongues? Does everyone prophesy? Does everyone teach? Well, it's a rhetorical question, which means it answers itself. No, it's obvious. Not everybody has one gift. Not everybody has another gift. Not everybody has a different gift. The bottom line is, what it's saying is everybody doesn't carry these gifts. We don't all have these gifts in common. We have the same spirit, but we're given different gifts according to God's will. So when you look at that, you look at your hand. That's a perfect example. Each finger serves a different purpose. Try holding a glass over something soft in case you drop it. Try holding a glass without involving your thumb. And the thumb is the least attractive of all the fingers. The thumb is the most, what the Bible would call the, the common looking one. It's comely looking. But it is the most essential because that's where your leverage comes from. So even though you have a hand, you have to, each finger has to serve its purpose. 
certain fingers you braid with, certain fingers you scratch with. <laughs> I mean, it's just everything has its purpose. And the finger, or let's say the hand, cannot do what the feet can do. The feet cannot do what the hand can do. They weren't designed for those different purposes. And you and I are not designed for the different purposes. Lynn and you are not designed the exact same way. We are individuals, unique, according to God's purpose. So Rashad, there are times when you see demons, you hear demons, you rebuke demons, you do spiritual warfare, and there are times you feel something in the atmosphere that doesn't feel right. That's discernment. There are times when you feel something very rich and and positive, that's discernment. There are times that words come out of your mouth that you didn't expect to say. That's prophecy. It's, it's, there are different things that happen with us, and they're not always a blanket gift that carries us all throughout our lives. Some gifts only rear their heads when needed, where other gifts are readily available to us. It's really... It's really interesting how that works. So what ends up happening is when we have these giftings, there are some gifts that will happen all the time, all the time. I can draw pictures of demons, baby. I've seen them so many times in so many forms. I've seen them. I've been translated from one place to another in other people's homes. And they were shocked when I said something I wasn't supposed to speak. So there are different types of gifts. But the one thing I've never done is been a worker of miracles. That's that's never, I mean, I've done a little lightweight stuff. Somebody has a, an ache in their leg or limp or somebody's knee was, was hurting and I prayed for it, but it didn't heal it because a year down the road, they still had knee problems off and on. It just worked for that moment. So I'm not a miracle worker. I love to be, that's one of the gifts I, I really covet, but my gift is preaching, teaching, counseling, exhortation. That's my motive gift that flavors all the other gifts, exhortation. Um, once in a while, I get a word of prophecy. Once in a while, I get a word of knowledge. There are times I get a vision of something that people do in private, they don't know God has exposed them to me. And I know, I know some of their dirt, but I don't tell them, it's just for me to pray about. So there are times when God will, will, will open a window and make you see what nobody else can see. He's showing you what, what he sees. He's showing you the abominations people do that he sees. So there are times when you have been in situations, Rashad, where you felt like the air wasn't right. You felt the, the spirit around everybody wasn't right. And, and, and you knew something wasn't normal. You're discerning de demonic activity. That's a gift that not all Christians have. There are times when you said things out of your mouth. You weren't even trying to say it came out of your mouth. Why? God spoke through you to you. That's prophecy. There are times when you gave counsel to kids. That's wisdom. See, you don't always get what gifts are being are working in you. But from the stories you tell me and the things, the conversations we've had, I can see the spirit of God moving in you. When I listen to Lynn, Lynn is more of a pragmatic person. She's a very practical person. So she doesn't experience a lot of the supernatural gifts. But there are a lot of things that she has I don't have. You don't have. But she has it. It's like boom, boom, boom. 
it's it's simple math to her. One and one equals two. But the rest of us are scratching our heads trying to figure stuff out. And she just gets it. Boom, boom, boom. That's all there is. So that's what I'm talking about, giftings. My father was the kind that could take something apart, put it together. It made absolute sense. I would have to have somebody help me with that. Now I can figure stuff out. I can come up with witty ideas and creativity because God gifted me with the gift of creativity. But when it comes to mechanical stuff, some things I have to be shown how it goes. I need some instructions. And in some cases, I can put it together and figure it out for myself like I did with this chair I'm sitting in. So it it depends on where you are, where your giftings are. I remember a time, let me share this with you, uh, you guys. One time I was in the classroom and the teacher was on jury duty. Now, I've never been, I've never claimed the gift of teaching and all of that, but I know I've got it because when it's needed, it's there. And I blow my own mind with the things that come out of me and I'm like, how could I have ever even come up with that? That's beyond me. And I know it's beyond me. I know I'm not all that bright in some areas. Trust me, I know. So here I am trying to help these kids get a passing grade on their math test that's coming next week. The teacher's not there, but I am. So I pray and I ask God for help. And that's one of the best ways for you to experience new gifts is to always ask God for help when you're, when you're venturing out on something that you normally don't do. So when I ask God for help, even things you do do, I ask God for help and he gave me the idea to have two teams, A team, B team. The A and B team have to compete for the answers and the Lord gave me the rules of the game as I went. It was a progressive ongoing thing. And by the time we got through, the kids were totally engaged, totally eager to get up to that board, totally eager to help each other come up with the answer and work out the, the equations. And the beautiful part was when the teacher got back and gave the test, the science test, the Lord gave me, uh, he took my mind back to a game. I'm just sharing with you how God uses our gifts with our memories and experiences. There's a game we used to play in New York called Red Rover. And Red Rover was a thing where you try to break the ranks and kids would lock arms. And you try, that kid in the middle would try to break ranks. And they run the charge and you lock arms so they couldn't get past you. But if they broke three free, then they were able to join the circle and someone else would be it, the monkey in the middle. So the Lord brought that to my mind and said, now you have the whites, you have the reds, and you have the villain. And what we were teaching, we were preparing them for a test. And it was the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the villain was the bacteria, the germ that caused sickness. So I was showing them how the white blood cells protect the red blood cells. So I had the white blood cells surround the red blood cells. And we had to face the outer circle so that when Patrick tried to break rank, our arms would bend normally and not break any bones. So Patrick was the germ and he was outside of the circle. I got all that from God. I would never have even thought that up. And those kids got A's and B's on that math test and science test. The teacher didn't know what the heck happened because that group was a special ed group that got C's, D's, and F's, and they got A's, B's, and C's, not one D, not one F. And it was, the majority was A's and B's. She was shocked. She didn't, I didn't say a thing. I, you know, just like, I know what's up. 
God did this. God did this. So God will put you in a situation that you've never been in before. And if you think to ask God to give you ideas, ways to do things, you will have gifts you never had before. You never used before. You never did it like that before. But what? God gave you a whole, he just downloaded a whole classroom syllabus or whatever. I don't know. That's probably not the word. But he'll download a whole scenario for you and you'll be able to carry it out. Boom, boom, boom. And the results will amaze you because you acknowledge God in all your ways. How you doing, Key? So I just wanted to share with you that the giftings of God are individual for individual needs, for for, for the necessity that that is right there at that moment. God is an individual God. He doesn't deal with everybody like everybody's part of the norm. Everybody is is uh is is a conforming co- carbon copy of the next person. He deals with us individually. And Rashad, there are areas where you will find yourself very very strong where you never saw that strength before. Lynn, you're going to have an experience with God. I'm going to tell you that right now. You are going to have an experience with God and it's going to blow your mind. You're going to be a weeping willow. You, you're not going to be able to fight the tears. It's going to move you. It, the experience is going to move you to tears. It's going to tenderize you in ways that you never experienced before. So know that God has things. It doesn't all happen at the same section of our life. Some things happen in increments like onion layers for healing. It's the same thing. It's it's like building blocks of experiences. You go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. And as long as you truly pursue God, these things will happen. They have to because God is a progressive God. He's not stagnant. So be encouraged, you guys. You too, Key, you be encouraged. God has stuff for you, but you got to bring some to get some. And you got to remember, you got to play according to God's rules. You can't fake them. You can't play them. You can't psych them. God knows. So as long as he knows that each one of us are pursuing him, oh, he's got stuff for us that we've never, even for me, I've never seen before, never experienced before. 